Hey guys, I'm Mel and today I'm going to do my July wrap up. This was probably one of the best months I've had so far this year. Not so much in quantity but definitely in quality. I gave 5 stars to 4 books and overall this year I only gave 5 stars to 15 books from the 95 I read. So I don't know much math but I think 4 books in a month is a lot. Also like last month I read a lot of my friends recommendations so thank you. The first book I read is In the Hopes of Memories by Olivia Rivers which was recommended by Eva from Fred Weasley Died Laughing. This is about Hope who died so she left a scavenger hunt for her friends so they can know her and themselves a lot more. I feel like this is the perfect example of a book that tackles a lot of different subjects with a lot of knowledge about all of them. Going in and treating them with care. I feel like this is the definition of diversity. That is not an us versus them, but the realization that we all come from different backgrounds and we all have our own things that makes us unique and also part of humanity. Obviously it's not a perfect book but I think I read it at the perfect time and it's also a book that is going to stay with me for a long time so I gave it 5 stars. Then I read Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. This one I saw in one of Denise's videos from Denise Marie. This is a fantasy book about an alternative universe where the Great Library of Alexandria is still existing and basically rules the entire knowledge of the world. I feel like the idea of this book is super brilliant and original. I mean the execution was quite impressive as well. This is an epic story about book lobbying, book smuggling and book burning and how dangerous it would be for an institution to have all the knowledge in the world. I thought everything was so cleverly done and I gave it 4 stars. Then I read a book that I've been talking about non-stop and that is Julia Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. It's about a girl who lives in the Bronx and lives to be an intern for a very feminist author and she starts understanding herself and the world from a feminist perspective. This is one of my new all-time favorite books. The way it treated feminism and intersectionality blew my mind. It was so intelligent and carefully done without shying away from controversial topics. The main character is Latina and gay, so she talks a lot how she sees herself and her identity and her sexuality, but also about her spirituality and her womanhood. It's a brilliant book to understand privilege, white supremacy and POC spaces and obviously I gave it 5 stars. Then I read Asking for It by Louis O'Neill. This I bought it read with Leanne from Leanne Rose who you should all check out because she's one of my favorite people here and reading this particular book with her was such an amazing experience because she has some very interesting views of the world and of feminism and also this book is set in Ireland and she is Irish so she made me see a lot of things that were happening that she could see in her life as well. This is about a girl who is very popular until one night she gets raped and the pictures of that rape gets uploaded to Facebook and basically the entire town turns against her. This obviously is so difficult to read but it's so important that we still read it and we get past that uncomfortable position to understand what's happening. I think the entire thing was a commentary on today's society and rape culture but it's also about other little things. Here we have the big issue of the rape victim normally being the one who has to explain what happened and who has to prove what happened to her instead of the system being on her side and making her life easier. This was incredibly thought-provoking and obviously I give it 5 stars as well. Then I read The Novice by Taran Mataru. This is about a blacksmith who goes to a military academy to be a summoner which basically means that they can summon demons in order for them to fight with them. This book didn't really do it for me. I couldn't stand the writing style. I thought it was very juvenile. Also, I didn't feel like it was very original. It was very predictable because there are so many similar fantasy books. It was really fast paced and I liked the main character because he was different from the normal fantasy heroes. Overall I thought it was enjoyable but not memorable so I gave it 3 stars. Then I read Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre. Since she was young she suffered by the hand of society and her family so she starts killing people 
and obviously she's trying to escape anyone who might notice that she is the one killing those people. This was beautiful, intriguing and mysterious. Everything from the original story to the flood and human characters to the gothic and historical atmosphere worked perfectly. It was even better because I love Jane Eyre, so the fact that the main character compared herself and her situations to Jane Eyre, it just made it 10 times better for me. I adored the character of Jane Steele. I thought she was such a torture heroine with a dark past but at the same time so many redeemable qualities and interesting views of the world. She was also kick-ass and a feminist, gave this book 4 stars. After that it was a book to button so I'm not going to repeat everything I said in my last video which is my book to button wrap up. I'm going to leave a link here and in the description. I'm just going to quickly mention the books I read. I first read All Men's War by John Scalzi which I gave 4 stars. Then I read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and I gave it 4 stars. Then I read Wild Swans by Jessica Spotswood which I gave 3 stars. Then I read Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi and I gave it 4 stars. Then I read Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng which I gave 5 stars. Then I read Another World Known by Agatha Christie which I gave it 4 stars. And then I read How We Deal With Gravity which I gave 2 stars. After that I read Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Novel. This book I started reading it during the book to bottom. This is about a group of scientists who find a giant alien robot which parts are scattered through the world so they are trying to put it back together and to figure out why it's there. This one had its up and downs for me. There were some moments between the boring moments that left me with my mouth open but that doesn't take away all the boring moments in the middle. Overall, I was intrigued about what would happen, but the style of the book just didn't help. This is told through interviews and case files, which means that there is a lot of telling, but almost no showing, which I like sometimes if it's done well, which isn't the case for this book. Overall, it was okay, and the ending definitely made me intrigued to read the next one so that's why I gave it three stars. Finally I read Torn, the second book in the Wicked Saga by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Obviously I can't tell you a lot because it's a second book but the first one is about a girl Ivy who works for an order that hunts Pei and are trying to keep them away from our world because they are evil. In this book Ivy is trying to put her life together after what happens in the first book. I always adore Jennifer L. Armentrout's books. I believe her plots are very unique in a way that is not like brilliant but is enjoyable always. And this one was not different. I enjoyed it a lot but unfortunately there were a few flaws in the writing and the dialogue that I couldn't stop thinking about. So I think I saw Jennifer L. Armentrout grow so much but at the same time I think there is a lot of place to grow. But there were some really amazing things in this book as well. Tink is always amazing, I adore him. It wasn't that bad but it wasn't really good so I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. So yeah, that was my entire wrap up for July. Hope you're having an amazing day. Hope you like this. If you subscribe and I will see you when I see you. Bye!